Hi everyone, I'm Liz House, a project assistant with the help team. Firstly, I just wanted to start with a bit of a scenario to get you thinking, which you guys might be able to identify with. Um, the phone's been ringing off the hook all morning. You've got several deadlines to meet by the end of the day, as well as meetings to attend. You've just been asked to order catering for a meeting the following day. And the request is that you include healthy options, but it's not specific, so you're going to have to find the time to work out what to order. I wonder if anyone's found themselves in this sort of situation before. So today we'll be talking about the process of developing a healthy catering list, which might be um, a strategy or something that can help you um, quickly and easily identify healthy catering, um, especially when you're pressed for time. So through our work in supporting councils and non-government organisations to develop healthy eating policy, uh, we found that people really wanted a way to put that policy into practice, um, specifically in terms of catering. Uh, the people that we've been working with um, have told us that um, they really wanted some guidance when it came to catering. Um, so instead of simply providing people with a list of um, healthy options, um, which isn't necessarily relevant in all settings, depending on what um, different types of caterers are available. Um, we've developed a process in which organisations um, can use this to tailor a um, healthy catering list of their own, using their own um, preferred caterers. So the process involves working together with colleagues um, to identify items that are suitable for the list and also working with the caterers to ensure that these requests are feasible. I guess the main thing I want to highlight is that it's really important to uh, remember that we're aiming for the overall health of the catering rather than getting too caught up in the nutrients provided in every single item. So what are the benefits of having a healthy catering list? Well, like I said um, earlier, we know that once a policy is in place, the next challenge is to really act upon it. Um, alternatively, we found that some um, councils in particular that we've been working with have used the process of developing a healthy catering list as a lead-in to developing a healthy eating policy um, because it's um, a nice practical way to start. So it can be used in, in either way in that respect. We also know that it allows people to order quick and um, easy uh, healthy options um, and it can save a lot of time and some practical examples of when the list does come in particularly handy is you might have a new staff member starting or the person who generally orders healthy catering might be away or on leave. Having something there for other people to turn to um, is often a really good um, idea. Um, as Louisa mentioned earlier, there's always different nutrition information that's out there in the media. Having the list can help reduce this stress given that you know, it's been developed within um, your organisations with colleagues and using some um, evidence-based resources which we'll be talking about further. It also allows you to discuss healthy options within your um, workplace and come to some form of consensus around what is healthy and what isn't um, a healthy choice for your workplace setting. Also um, unique to this process is that um, it allows you the opportunity to speak with caterers um, and really this can save time in the long run by you being able to tell them what things you're after. And like Louise mentioned earlier, from our experience with caterers, they're really amenable to working with you to um, help deliver you what um, you're after and what you need. Um, and as she was mentioning as well, healthy catering um, is really on the increase and um, caterers are aware of this, so they're really keen to chat with you. So there are six steps um, involved in putting together a healthy catering list and we're going to go through each of these in a bit more detail. So the first step is pulling together a working group um, to help develop the list. So ideally this should include people who um, are involved in ordering catering um, and others who may have perhaps been involved in putting together a healthy eating policy. But it's also a nice idea to send out the invitation to other people who might be interested in being part of the working group. Um, so you'll find that a lot of people are generally interested in healthy eating. Um, so you know, offering the invitation for people to be on the working group is nice to keep it collaborative. 
It's also a good idea with your um, working group um, if you can identify a lead person, so someone um, who can really pull the group together um, is always very handy as well. So once you've got your working group, the next step is to find out what's already been done. So what are the current protocols or procedures for catering within your organisation? Um, do you have a healthy eating policy? And also, who are the preferred caterers? Now you'll be going through the menus to develop a healthy catering list to identify items that are appropriate, those that aren't appropriate, and items that could be modified to um, meet the list. Um, and these can be clarified with your caterer to make sure they're feasible. So it can be easiest to go through the list and identify those that are appropriate and those that definitely aren't appropriate first, and then identify those items that um, could potentially be modified uh, with your caterer. So um, you've all got a copy of this. You don't have to turn to it now, but within this document, we've got the eight tips for healthy catering. Um, so that's really the first pass when it comes to looking at menu items. So you'll be looking at the menu items and um, asking yourself, does this item fit with the overall tips? So for example, um, if you were deciding whether scones with jam or cream would be um, appropriate, you would notice that on the tips um, it suggests that you should avoid butter or cream. Um, however, in terms of the scone and the jam, there's no specific details on that, which is where the healthy catering suggestions table comes into play. You would notice that the scones are a healthy option, However, it's recommended that you swap the jam for 100% spreadable fruit. And um, you could also try vanilla yogurt, thick vanilla yogurt instead of cream. So just going back to Louise's point earlier about um, making little changes and how they can have an impact. Um, thick and cream is actually 40% fat, whereas yogurt, even the full fat variety, is only 4% fat. And we know overall that um, the percentage of fat from cream is predominantly saturated fat, so that's the, um, the type of fat that can um, increase your risk of um, cardiovascular disease, whereas um, the fat found in yogurt, um, the saturated fat content is much lower. So just this simple change um, can have a big impact of the health overall. So on some caterers menus you might find that they're not really specific with how something is prepared um, or an ingredient that in, was in, is in that. So for example risotto balls, um, you'd be thinking well how are they been prepared, have they been deep fried or um, are they baked? So these are the types of questions um, that you know you need to think about as to whether or not you know it would be appropriate for the list and you know even something that you might be able to chat with your caterer about which brings me to the next step which is step four um, which is about consulting with your caterers um, so once you've gone through that process with your working group um, hopefully you will have identified the items that you know are appropriate and those that um, aren't appropriate and then the items that could potentially be modified um, to meet the list. Um, and this is when you've got the opportunity to speak to the caterers um, about how they can modify them for you. So let your caterer know that you're interested in providing healthy catering for your workplace and then um, have a chat with them. Find out how realistic it is for them to do um, the certain requests that you've got. Within um, this resource as well, um, which you should all have a copy of in your bags, there is a um, table called Request to Ask Your Caterer, which includes some questions that can really get you thinking um, about some simple changes that they might be able to make that can improve the ov overall health of your catering. So that can be a good place to start. Um, a good example, I guess, of our experience with working uh, with some caterers is that they were actually able to source multi-grain wraps and incorporate that as part of their regular um, menu item because they realised that yes, that's something that um, a lot of people are requesting and um, speaking to them months later, it's been a huge hit and you know they're probably selling more of the multi-grain than they have been the white. So um, yeah, you know if you don't ask, you don't get and I think um, with a lot of people requesting healthier options, we're going to see hopefully um, more healthy options on the menu. So the next step in the process is to promote and share the list with your colleagues and your organisation. You've gone to all the effort um, of helping 
people be able to identify healthy options by creating the list. So you really want to make sure it gets out there within your organisation. Uh, it's a good idea to have a um, key contact person, which hopefully you can put on the list or any supporting documents that you share out with your organisation. Um, this might be the same person who's um, leading your working group, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Uh, but it's, also, it's a great idea to have someone that people can contact if they've got any questions about the list or ordering healthy catering. The next um, part of this step is to brainstorm some ideas with your working group of how the list could be shared. So some ideas could include a staff intranet, uh, email distribution list, um, placing hard copies in the lunchroom or even on pin-up boards. Um, you'll see over that way. <laughs> um, the City of Marion hired the Go For Two and Five Veggie Man costume um, and wandered through council uh, with the Mayor Felicity Ann Lewis and their Opal Project Support Officer and were handing out the healthy catering list, some supporting documents and then some nice healthy freebies to go along with that just to really raise awareness and say, hey guys, you know, we've got this list that can help you order healthy options. Um, it's here, make sure you use it. So last but definitely not least in the process is to seek feedback. So um, finding out how staff are finding the list and how easy it is to use. Um, with all the great technology we've got these days, SurveyMonkey, an online electronic survey, and there's lots of similar ones I'm sure you're all aware of, is a, a great tool. You just put it all uh, all your questions in electronically and then you can, it's simple as sending off a link, just emailing it to people and it, it's pretty much collated all uh, the results. So that's a fantastic quick way to get some feedback um, which we like to use as well. Um, alternatively though you could always just provide perhaps a generic email that people could provide um, feedback to or alternatively um, you could even have like an anonymous box that people could drop comments in. As part of the review process as well, um, you'd want to time timeline um, appropriate times when you can review the list. So, for example, with the change of season, uh, a lot of caterers might offer additional options that they might perhaps not offer other times of the year. So these could also be um, some nice healthy additions to add. HELP have also developed some other resources which can make catering quick and easy. Um, you'll see the poster, which I think a few of you have got there. It's just A5 in there, but we've, um, we've got them available on our website and you can print them off as A3 as well. So that is um, a quick picture-based guide to um, healthy catering. So some important things to remember. So ideally the things you always want to provide when catering um, and then some requests that you can ask of your caterers that can um, make the health of your catering uh, better. We've also got a little um, A5 resource called Healthy Catering Suggestions. So that includes the eight tips for healthy catering, a smaller version um, of the poster as well. So um, this document was really developed so that if you're sitting at work and you don't have access to a pin-up board where the poster is, um, you've got the little poster on the back of the booklet so you can be referring to that anyway. We've also got a healthy products list which can be handy um, for some healthy products that can be bought from your local supermarket or bakeries. So if you need to provide catering at last minute, you need something low cost, quick and easy and you're not going to be getting catering from an external caterer, these are some um, good product ideas. So now I just thought quickly we could go through an example um, of the process of um, identifying healthy menu options. So this is the, an example of the um, breakfast section of a menu. So I thought um, we could start by looking at the eight tips for healthy catering as a first pass. Um, and then we will use the healthy catering suggestions table to further clarify items. So looking at the first two items, um, the omelette with bacon and tomato and cheese and then the egg and bacon muffin. If you're looking at the eight tips for healthy catering, eggs are not specifically on there so we probably want to know a little bit more information about these. So we'll refer to our healthy catering suggestions table um, after we've done the first pass. 
Same with the mini croissant. Uh, we'll check the other booklet. With the mini quiche, um, we know from the eight tips for healthy catering that we should be including vegetarian items. So this could potentially be a very a vegetarian option, but we probably uh, need to clarify with our caterer about this. Yogurt is included on the eight tips for healthy catering. We know that uh, it's suggesting that reduced fat options are the way to go. Um, however, we know that calcium is a nutrient at risk, so a lot of um, partic particularly younger women um, aren't getting enough calcium. We know as well that given the individual serves, they're likely to be portion controlled. Um, so this would make um, a suitable choice, even though it's not the reduced fat, it's still a good um, nutritious food. So these would be suitable items for our list. Um, again, with the fruit skewers and yogurt, we know from the tips that we should be including plenty of fruit when it comes to catering. Um, and again, yogurt is a good source of calcium, so this would also make a healthy choice. Um, so the last two items, the fruit salad cup and the fruit platters, being fruit as well, um, are healthy and could definitely make the list. So now if we go back to the um, healthy catering suggestions table for those items that we needed um, a little bit more information on. So if we turn to the cooked breakfast section, we can see that eggs cooked as an omelette are a healthy choice. We might want to check that the bacon is lean, so trimmed of fat. So perhaps we can put um, a line under this item. And then with the egg and bacon muffin, we might want to check the cooking method of the egg. So dry, fried or poached would be best. Um, and if possible, a whole, if there's a wholemeal muffin option, that would be a better choice. But um, as Louisa mentioned earlier in her discussion, um, the white option is still okay, but where we can, um, going the wholemeal would be best. Looking at the baked products, although I'm sure a lot of us would remember from earlier on, or would be aware anyway, that croissants are not a healthy option, um, particularly because they're very high in fat. So we'll put a line through this item as this wouldn't make the healthy catering list. Um, although quiche is not specifically under the breakfast section, um, it would be good to see what uh, varieties are offered because it's um, it could be vegetarian and that's a good option to have. So from this process, um, we've identified those options that would be appropriate for healthy catering and then those that aren't quite so appropriate and identified those that we might want to speak to our caterers about to clarify as to whether um, it would be appropriate to be on the list. Um, just a point to add, Remember, overall, we're aiming for overall health of catering and not focusing on the minute details. So if your catering is bright, um, full of colours, predominantly from fruit and veg, um, some grain foods, so predominantly whole grain where possible, um, some lean protein and mostly reduced fat dairy, then your catering is likely to be pretty much on the mark.